Hello students today we are going to start the first chapter of physics of grade 9 that is motion in today's lecture we will cover the topics rest and motion and the second topic is scalar and vector quantities so let's start with the first concept of this chapter that is rest and motion how can we say a body or an object is at rest let us understand with an example suppose you have two bodies body a and body b if body b does not change its position with respect to body a means its surroundings and with respect to time then we can say this body b is at rest clear understood i am repeating again if a body does not change its position with respect to its surroundings and time then we can say the body or an object is at rest fine next is motion taking the same example now if body b changes its position and shift to this point now this body b changes its position with respect to its surroundings and with respect to time then we can say the body is in motion fine a is the reference point for body b now so what is reference point actually it is the place from which a location is observed and measured so the position of b is measured from point a so a acts as reference point clear now you need to remember this point rest and motion they are relative now how we can say rest and motion they are relative an object can be in motion in relation to one object while it can be at rest in relation to another object at same instant of time let us take an example suppose in a moving bus we have two passengers passenger 1 and passenger 2 there is an observer which is sitting outside the bus that is observer 3 now this passenger 2 is moving with respect to this observer 3 fine but at the same time if we talk about passenger 1 the body b or the passenger 2 is at rest with respect to the passenger 1 so taking these two cases into consideration the passenger 2 is moving with respect to observer 3 and it is at rest with respect to passenger 1 at the same instant so we can say rest and motion the both are relative now let us discuss the next concept of this chapter that is physical quantities now what are physical quantities a quantity which can be measured fine that is a physical quantity fine suppose if you talk about the length of a table suppose it is 4 meter fine so we can measure the length of the table so it is a physical quantity so length is a physical quantity it can be measured using numbers 4 is a number so physical quantity can be measured using numbers fine now you need to remember one thing while writing a physical quantity we need to write the combination of magnitude and a unit magnitude is the numeric value fine suppose if we talk about the mass of an object as 10 kg 10 is the magnitude means numeric value and kilogram is its unit so 10 kg is physical quantity mass is the physical quantity so it is 10 kg fine some of the examples of physical quantities are mass 
amount of substance, length, time, temperature, etc. Fine. Now we can classify the physical quantities in two groups. First group is scalar quantities. Second is known as vector quantities. Now let us describe these two quantities. Fine. First is scalar quantity. What is scalar quantity? A physical quantity which can be described completely by its magnitude. That is a scalar quantity. Clear? Means we don't need the direction to describe that quantity that is a scalar quantity. For example, length, time, speed, distance, volume, etc. Fine. If we need only magnitude means numeric value to describe a quantity that is a scalar quantity. Second is vector quantity. What is vector quantity? A physical quantity which is described by magnitude as well as its direction. Means we need direction to describe that quantity that is known as vector quantity. Fine. For example, displacement. Displacement is actually distance with direction. Velocity, similarly speed with direction. Fine. So the physical quantities in which we need direction also that is a vector quantity. Fine. Some more examples are acceleration, force, momentum, etc. Fine. 